Hello everybody, welcome back to the Gregorius Method. In this video, we're going to be looking at homological delta functors, which are basically just a nice setting to put derived functors in, and, and they're a nice, nice bit of motivation as well. So I'm just going to be giving some basic definitions and, and a, a quick example. So it won't be a long video at all, it's just going to be some preliminary definitions before we move on move on to derived functors. So, so first of all, what is a homological delta functor? A homological delta functor and again you can do a similar definition for uh, cohomological delta functors but I'm just going to be sticking to homological delta functors. Homological delta functor is a collection of func functors T. So it's going to be uh, T i. Uh, they're going from between two abelian categories A and B, and delta i, which takes you from ti of, sorry, and to every exact sequence uh, which looks like this, we have um, these fun uh, these uh, functors delta, which delta i, which go from ti c to t i minus 1 of a. So these, uh, this collection of functors satisfies two conditions. One is that for every short exact sequence, uh, which takes, which looks something like this, we have a long exact sequence Which takes it, which just goes to la 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 la, and then it's going to go to T I A to T I of B to T I of C, and then we're going to go via delta I to T I minus 1 of A. Something like this. And secondly, what we have is that given two short exact sequences uh, 0 to A to B to C to 0 and 0 to A prime to B prime to C prime to 0 we have a commutative diagram which which goes from, uh, it's just going to go from T I of, of A, and then it's going to go um, to, sorry, T I of C, and then it's going to go to T I minus 1 of um, A and then this is going to go down to T I minus 1 of A prime and this is going to go down to T I of C prime and it's going to go across here like so okay and so now that we have this definition obviously the the most natural example of the delta functor would be homology which goes from the category of chain complexes uh, with values in some abelian category A and it's going to output an, an object of that abelian category A. This is a homological delta functor. Okay. And so now what we want to do is we're going to define a morphism 
between two homological delta functors, so definition. A morphism between two homological delta functors, S and T, is a collection of uh, Fn between S and Tn uh, of natural transformations uh, commuting with the deltas. Okay, and so this leads to the next definition, which is um, a homological delta functor T is universal if for another delta functor S, for another delta functor S, um, a natural transformation F zero between S0 and T0 uh, extends if, if a natural transformation uh, yeah extends is extended by let's just say is extended by Unique um, uh, delta functor uh, natural transformations transformations uh, F n between S n and T n, and again an example of this would be homology. And so what this is basically saying is that we can use just one natural transformations and then and then just extend it to get all of the other natural transformations and these are all unique, these FNs are unique. And so yeah, uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video, found it informative. These are just some basic definitions about delta functors because I felt that they, it would be nice to introduce delta functors before derived functors, so we can inject derived functors to our delta functors, and they're just a nice concept which I felt were worth introducing. So yeah, I will guess I'll see you in the next video, and uh, thank you for watching. Bye!